Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Reader Rambles, a weekly podcast for book lovers where I ramble about bookish topics and I help readers navigate life. It is episode 13, lucky number 13. Hello, thank you for joining me today. It is Friday, April 8th and today I'm talking all about tracking my reading. I got a question in my topic submission form which will be linked down below as always and I've made a little bit of a change because I think that some people were confused so that form is going to be used for advice and for topic submissions. So if there's a piece of advice that you would like from me you can submit it there. I think it's the best way for me to get anonymous submissions so feel free to load that up with topic submissions and some advice that you would like from me. So now that that's all out of the way let's begin the episode. I am currently reading a couple books. I went to the library this week. It is library week, national library week. Um, my mom got her library card which was cool so it was a fun time and I got too many books so there will be a library haul coming. I just need to film it. This is like the first day that it's actually been sunny. It has just been raining all week and I, I don't like it. I hate it. I hate it so much. The weather has prevented me from filming anything this week because it has just been very dark. It has rained almost every day this week and it's been horrible. <laughs> um, but I got some books from the library including the physical copy of Game On. And if you've been listening, I have been reading this since January. I got an e-arc of it and really the problem is is that I had to read it through the NetGalley app, which I hate, and then it expires after like 52 days so I don't have it forever and I did not read it in that time. And then I also have a Kindle version which doesn't expire but the formatting is weird so I think it's going to be way easier for me to read it physically so now I can pick that vlog back up and hopefully get it out by next week or just sometime this month. I have like a little scheduling conflict that I'm resolving so I'm trying to see if I just film videos on the weekends and like start vlogs on the weekends if it's easier because my Instagram controls my weekend vlog was really good in terms of me having enough time to edit and record and just make a fun video so I'm gonna try from here on out to just start filming on the weekends and just try and maybe make videos during the weekend that might not work all the time because I'm not really someone that can read so many books in two days. So this weekend I am trying it out with another swapping my screen time for reading time. I asked you on my community tab on my Pucks and Paperbacks channel. The vote was swapping screen time with reading time or a day in the life of a reader. Just a day in the life of how I read on the weekends versus weekday which I'm still going to do because it's going to be fun and I really wanted to do it but the biggest indicator was what you want to see first. The winner of the poll was swapping my screen time with reading time so I'm going to do that this weekend. It's just a little bit easier for me to just record on the weekends because I have more time. Since I work in the day it just doesn't really work out because then I just don't have energy and it's hard. So I'm going to try to film on the weekends and see how that works out because I have realized it might just be easier because I don't really have time or motivation in the week day because then I'm kind of burned out after work. So that's what's happening. Okay so I am currently reading Game On and I'm hoping to finish it this weekend. I am also reading two books. I said last week that I started Disability Visibility. I haven't gotten too much into it. I'm still in the introduction page and I also have your Heart, My Sky, which is a poetry collection that I talked about in my library book haul and I still need to finish this. <laughs> so I have three books I would like to finish this weekend but then I also have my Disability Readathon TBR that I need to do and I still need to film my TBR video. I need, I'm doing it outside because it's a game and it's been raining and not good lighting. It's just been not good weather so I haven't been able to do it so I'm really hoping to get it done this weekend or this week because well actually not this weekend I think it's supposed to rain this weekend so just whenever it doesn't rain is when I'm going to do it so look forward to that. 
Before I get into the topic, I have a little complaint that I wanted to bring up. Now, yesterday, a very good thing happened. The Bear Town series, the last book, The Winners, has a US date. It is October 4th. It is 700 pages. I am going to vlog it. I'm planning on like doing a whole, like, it's probably going to be a really long vlog, but I'm going to read both of the books. I actually do have vlogs where I've read the books for my Slapjaw Readathon. And um, I have a complaint. <laughs> And I'm never like this. I don't care about covers very much, but this is my favorite series ever. If you're new here, I love hockey. This is a whole series about hockey. It's a hockey town and has hockey players. It's a very intense series, but very good. And for my video people, here are the covers. They are great. I love them. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I did talk about this because I was just waiting to see if anybody else felt the same way as me. I don't think so, but my friend Michelle was laughing at me because I was sending them so many messages yesterday, just getting very upset <laughs> that the covers are not going to match. The covers are not going to match. And let me show you exhibit A. Let's look this up here. Why would you change the covers when the series is ending? Now, my covers will not match because I was looking to try and pre-order it. <laughs> and I could cry, actually. And I'm never like this. Like, I'm not really one to care about this stuff. We all know this. I'm not very materialistic. I don't care. But why would you do that to me? I don't like it. <laughs> I, hate, I hate it so much. It looks like a Wattpad cover. It looks like a Wattpad cover. And no... Like, no offense to the person who made this, but I don't like it, mainly because I get it. They're trying to make it match the Anxious People cover, but why would you do a cover change in the middle of this series wrapping up? Because now my series are not going to match, and guess what else? This is only going to be sold, for now, in hardcover. If you see here, hardcover, ebook unabridged audio download, and unabridged compact disc. And guess how much the book is? If you see here, $28.99 on Simon & Schuster, and I've checked everywhere else. These books are translated because the author is Swedish. And so I thought, okay, well maybe this is just like that cover, you know? I looked on Book Depository and I I saw this ugly cover, but then I looked on Amazon, or no, then I looked on Barnes & Noble, and there was like a little flag in the corner. On the bottom right corner, it said cover to be revealed, and it looked similar to this. So I was like, okay, well maybe they're, they are going to have a cover that matches these, but I don't think that that's my fate. So I don't know what I'm going to do, and I'm sad. I probably will just get the audiobook because it's 700 pages, and oh my god, I'm like, if I did a vlog, that would probably take me the whole rest of the year because it comes out in October, that vlog wouldn't come out till December. And how YouTube works is you kind of need to get things out fast because people are searching and you kind of want to be like the first one. And um, so <laughs> that's my problem. Maybe I can ask the publisher if they would send it to me. But I think after I'm like being mean about their covers, I don't think that, that would happen. Anyway, I'm sad. I am very sad and I could cry into my books because I'm sad that they're so ugly. Please let me know if anybody else agrees with me and if I'm just like being crazy because I I don't know. I think I'm just very passionate about the series. I think it's it's I think it's a common reader problem, but I don't have this problem very often because I don't read series. Um, <laughs> this is why. One of the reasons why? Just why would you do that to me? I'm so excited about this book. The Winners, I think, is a genius title, and now my series are not going to match, and I am sad. I am so sad. <laughs> it's fine. I just don't know what I'm going to do about it because I like, I like the Anxious People cover. It works, but why would you change the cover when the series is wrapping up? Like, we've known for, like, maybe a year or so, maybe only a year, but we've known that Frederick Buckman has the third book coming out. So why would you do that to me? 
or to do it to anybody and actually because now I'm just gonna have these two paperbacks and a big book that does not match <laughs> and the paperbacks usually don't come out first so I would have to wait like a couple years for the paperbacks to come out so I don't even know what I'm gonna do like maybe I will still buy it but I'll probably just get the audiobook but I like to sometimes have the physical book too but I have only read the books through audio so it makes sense but oh my god I'm so sad <laughs> somebody wants to remake this cover for me please I would really appreciate it I could probably make it myself but I don't know it just sucks like why would you change the cover it sucks but anyway so that was my tangent I'm really glad that the book is coming out and with that we actually have a date because when I talked about it in my anticipated releases video I didn't have a date so now we do and it's exciting but the cover <laughs> I am excited though that it's also 700 pages because I'm just excited to have 700 pages of all of my favorite characters. It's my favorite series ever and I'm just super excited. So with that out of the way, let's get into the episode. So today's episode is all about how I track my reading in 2022. I go over this a little bit in my episode about my favorite book apps, but today we're going all in and I'm telling you how I track my reading. And this is inspired by a submission I got that says, I'm not sure if this is a topic or an advice question, but I want to get into tracking reading stats and don't know where to start. So I'm curious what stats you track. Thank you for submitting that topic. And it's basically both. It's really a two-in-one, a topic and advice question. So thank you for submitting that. And like I said at the beginning, if you want to submit a topic or anything that you want advice on, you can submit it to the topic submission form in the description or show notes if you're listening. And let's get into it. So I'm going to go through my reading trackers that I have. And this is actually a good follow-up to my wrap-up, my March wrap-up, because I had planned to go over my stats from the story graph and I just didn't end up doing it. So we're going to do it here. So that is a transition into the first way that I track my rating. So initially, I only used Goodreads to track my reading. And then once spreadsheets got a little bit more popular, I love spreadsheets. I love making lists and stuff like that. So I usually just will have like spurts where I just get my own TBR, like my physical TBR, and I will like count them all. And then I put them into a spreadsheet and stuff like that. And that I never touch it ever again. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like that, but I am. Some people like to reorganize their bookshelves. I like to be more chaotic and put everything into a spreadsheet and then not put the books away for a couple months. <laughs> so the first way that I track my reading is through spreadsheets. So let's go over to my spreadsheets that I use right now. So I use the reading log from Book Riot, but I also will go over Hardback Hoarders because I really like the way hers is set up. As I'm using this new one, I kind of like Allie's a little bit better, but I like both of them for what they have. Okay, so here's the Book Riot one and how it works. I'll also have these linked down below if you're interested in any of these and you want to try them out for yourself. So here is the reading log for 2022 from Book Riot. And so the first sheet is reading log. So how it works is you input the title and author, the artist or narrator if it's audio, the publisher, which I don't really, you can see I really don't fill out because I just, it's not something I care about much and it's hard to always look it up. Then we have the publication date. And I think this is more so to track like if you're reading more backlist or if you're reading more new releases. And then the start date and the finish date of when you have read and finished the book. Then there's an option for DNF. As you can see, I have not DNF'd anything yet. There's also the audiobook length if you're reading an audiobook. The way that you import the length is by hour, minute, and seconds. So I had for Know My Name, it was 15 hours and 24 minutes. And so that's how you do that. There's also the format of print digital audiobook. And then there's these categories for fiction or nonfiction, form, 
genre and audience. So sometimes I don't use form because I don't need to. Um, if you're watching on video, I'm hoping that I can also get this up. I've been trying. I need to really look it up and figure out how to actually get a video podcast on Spotify and all because I know people do it, but I'm not really sure how to do it. I've tried it before, um, but I'll maybe try it for this episode because I know that you would probably like to see things if you're listening uh, and you don't want to have to just go back over to YouTube. But I totally get it. So I will try and do that for you. Anyway, for form, it is going to be picture book, play, short story collection, essay collection, comics, novella, poetry, or prose. And I've only had to use it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. And then genre we have general fiction, sci-fi, fantasy, romance, historical, mystery, crime, horror, classics, general nonfiction, memoir, bio, travel or food, nature slash science, current events, politics, and business slash self-help. And you can also change it with data validation. You can just look everything up on YouTube and all. I am not that person. I still don't really know how to use Excel, even though I took a class in college. <laughs> It was mandatory. I hated it. And then we have audience, which is YA, children's, and middle grade, and adult. There's no new adult, but like I said, you can just use data validation and you can import it that way. If you're interested, you just go to data, data validation, and then it should be a list of items. And then you can just comma new adult. But like I said, this is not a tutorial. <laughs> And what I really love about the Book Riot tracker is that it tracks, or you can track, like obviously you don't have to use everything, but it tracks if the author is, so it tracks your, so it tracks how diverse you're reading. A lot of people use trackers to track what they're reading and what needs improvement. So at the end of the year, you can see like, uh, you've read 12 black authors, but you've read like 44 white authors. And so you kind of figure out what you personally think should be better. And that's why I love reading trackers. So this one in particular has the columns for POC, LGBTQIA, trans, creator gender, disability rep, and that's it but also has like translation and all but I'll get to that so for each one for each one for POC LGBT and trans we have the following author slash artist protagonist or author artist and protagonist so instead of doing own voices this is a little bit different but I guess kind of the same so this is like a different way to track own voices which I think is really good and so then I'm excited to see what the charts look like just because I personally like to see how I'm reading. So, so far this year I have read 19 books and you can also do the same for disability rep. Um, hold on, let's go through this again. <laughs> so for the columns POC, LGBTQIA, trans, and disability rep, the options you have are author slash artist, protagonist, author, slash artist and protagonist. So this is just really, I think a good way to track how you're reading instead of kind of putting a label on things. Because when we get to Allie's, that's how hers is tracked a little bit, which I kind of like because then I can see how diversely I am reading and what needs improvement. I still really like this format because you can track if it's the author and or artist, the protag just a protagonist, or both. So I think that's really cool. I actually really like that. And then you can track the creator gender. So there's other non-binary, male slash female, which I'm not really sure about that. I think maybe because my thing with tracking is if I'm reading a co-written work, this doesn't apply. So that's like my one little critique about tracking is what I would fix. Um, and then we just have male and female. So that's how that works. You can also track reread if it was translated. And then you can click what original language it was translated in. Nation of origin. And then we get to book source, reason for reading, days read. And then I'll get to, so I'll get to that stuff. But just for book source and reason for reading, book source we have own TBR, purchase 2022, library, review copy, gift, or borrowed. And I've also used the data validation for this because sometimes 
I read books for videos, which I would also classify as fun, but um, that's for a reason for reading, but I like this because I get to see how many library books I've read. If you're on video, you can see that I have read a lot of library books, <laughs> but this is good because it actually helps me because I have been wanting to read more of my own TBR and <laughs> clearly that's not working out for me because last month I did the math and I need to read at least 30 books if I want to half it and maybe get to like 50% or something like that. I could be totally wrong with that, but it was some something along those lines and I was like, oh, I could definitely do that, which would be like reading five books off my own TBR a month, but that didn't happen last month, so <laughs> it's fine. It's all in good fun. Anyway, next for reason for reading, we have fun, work, school, book club, personal development. Now, these don't apply to me, so I have, I think, changed it a little bit. No, never mind. I guess I didn't. I thought I changed it for one. Oh, yeah. I've changed some of them to publisher and YouTube because sometimes I read it for YouTube, sometimes a publisher sent it to me, which still is classified as fun because I only will read it for fun, but I just still like to classify if I've read like my arcs or not. So then we get to the big stats, which is days read, pages per day, time per day. And so I really like this because it just shows me, but it's not very accurate because it's just the math when you put in the duration of days that you have read. So I could have read more that day than this is actually saying. So currently, we'll just read off when I read Fast Pitch, it says I read 22 pages a day, but that is not true because I read it in like one day. <laughs> oh, basically, I think I read like a couple pages one day. Then I flew through it on the last day of the month. So then we have days read. Yeah, see, fast pitch days read is eight, but that's not really that true. But that's probably because the way that I imported it. And then we have time per day if you're reading an audiobook. And then there's rating, which if you know, I have not been reading books this year very much unless they're arcs as you can see but also like if I just feel the need to rate it because a lot of it is if it's a trans book I'm gonna give it a five star if I gave it a five star because we need to be getting trans people and like marginalized authors to have better ratings so uh yeah that's also why I've been doing that. So then we have the Read Harder Challenge, which is why I really like this because it actually links up to the Read Harder Challenge. Then at the end of this sheet, it says notes slash review. So if I want to add like trigger warnings or just link my reviews, I do that. So then we'll go over to the Read Harder Challenge just so I can show you. So when you import the number, that corresponds to the Read Harder Challenge, it just will automatically import, which I think is so cool. And then for notes, I can put the books that I think I'm going to read. So then the second sheet is stats. So you can see mostly all of my stats. So the way the stats work are there's total books read, total DNF, total money spent, which I haven't gotten to that yet. I also want to point out that I took some of Allie's spreadsheet pages and I put them onto this one. So not all of them are the Read Harder Challenge, but I liked some of the aspects of Allie's, so I just put it onto this one. Um, then we have total of books and percentage of all read, which I don't really understand the percentage part. I don't really know what that's there for. I'm not a very good at math, so I don't really know. But then we have source, reason for reading. And so this just like tracks all that, the genre, the length that you've read, pages read, ratings, month read. And then so basically just everything that I talked about in the first sheet is brought. And yeah, so that's what that looks like. And then you get to see the charts which if you like stats, I think you'll really enjoy this because it will really show you all of your statistics and it's cool. <laughs> so here's just all of this. I like the books finished by month because that helps me. These really help me when I'm filming my wrap ups actually. Um, and yeah, they're just cool to see at the end of the year. We have queer protagonist, queer author slash artist trans versus cis protagonists, trans versus cis authors. So that's why all of that is in there. The no data part, I don't know what this is. It might just be something that I haven't used much of, but yeah, this is what my tracker looks like. Then we have the book spending log, part of the book riot 
reading tracker is the book spending log and then the books bought slash sold is Allie's but I just like how hers is set up a little bit better but I don't want to screw up the formatting of the book riot one so I'm not gonna do that but here I can just track all of my purchases which are good for book hauls and all of that but sometimes I don't update it that much <laughs> and I forget um and then I can put my pre-orders and all in and I like it then here's Allie's which I just like better because hers you can track if you've sold books and if you bought them which is cool and then you can just do if you've where you've acquired them from and all of that but also hers is transaction month so you can track which is really good for book hauls but the book spending log does not do that which I kind of wish it did then this is another part of Allie's, which is the 2022 releases, which helps me track my pre-orders and ARCs. Then the library one, I don't, I guess I haven't really used that much, but that was also a part of Allie's. So that is the Book Riot reading log, and now over to Allie. This is going to be a long episode. <laughs> so here is Allie's, and this is Allie from the Hardback Hoarder. Hers will be linked down below. She has not made a new one for this year. This is from last year's and these are my stats from last year, which I thought was going to be good to show you just what it looks like at the end of the year. So last year I read 100 books and hers is categorized in title, author, page read, hours listened, rating, month read. Actually, the reading log for Book Riot kind of has that method, but it is from just when you're importing date read and date finished. Um, main genre, subgenre, intended audience, serial, which is standalone, companion, series, and unknown. And then you put in the series and series number. Format is physical ebook or audiobook. Format two is what I had to do because sometimes I hybrid read and I want to import it. Um, then release date, type of publication, traditional indie or self-published, which I think is a good touch. Author identity. Now this has pronouns. And it's a little bit confusing because we have agender, bigender, gender fluid, gender queer, he, him, intersex, she, her, they, them, transgender, unknown. So I think the way that I like it better is the way the reading log for Book Riot does it because you can just put cis or trans, which I think is a little bit better, but not everybody identifies as trans. Some non-binary people are just non-binary and some gender fluid people like you know it's an umbrella some people just don't identify as trans and that's fine i do like that intersex is also incorporated and i think that ellie's is okay but i think that this could be a little bit reworked but like i said you can just make it your own with the data validation then we have author race and i've also duplicated that because sometimes i'm reading an anthology or something like that or just like a co-written work and I need to import both. Then we have author status. If they're new to me, I've read them before or a debut. Own voices you can check. Acquired is Audible, Book Box, Borrowed, Book of the Month, Gift, Kindle Unlimited, Library, Libro FM, NetGalley, Publisher, Scribd, Owned, or Other. Which I actually do like that and I would add that to my own. And then there's also a mood tracker. I didn't really use it that much except for for Skate for Your Life. <laughs> Stop, that's actually so funny. <laughs> it's just all crying. Oh, that's funny. Sometimes I make myself laugh in these. Like sometimes I've just put some notes for myself to look back later and laugh. This also has date started and date finished and it tracks the days you've read it. And then I like this because you can add trigger warnings, which is good for me to add because then it helps me when I'm doing wrap ups. I feel like this is more curated to booktubers and just like creators in general. You can also track if you read it for a readathon, which I like, um, a reread, where do you hear about it from? Then you have the red four, which is not a drop down box. You can just type it in, which I like. And then notes or your review is here. So I'm just going to go through hers a little bit quicker. So here you see the year stats and this is cool because the graphs are pretty and they show you everything <laughs> that I've done. So this will help you to see what needs improvement. So it also helps me see if I've read more of my own books or if I've read more of my library books. So it said that I read 18 library books. I checked out 29 
And I think last year maybe I read more of my own TBR actually. Owned was 28. So I actually did better last year. And I read 28. So I am trying to like beat that number from last year for this year. Um, but yeah, it's actually cool. I like it. Uh, and if you like it too, you can download it. Um, and she has all of the instructions at the first sheet. And then it also tracks your reading goal. So that's pretty cool if you want to import that. Um, average days to finish a book is six. So listen, I'm not lying. It does usually take me like a week to read books. And then you can track your star ratings, publication years. I didn't even see that last time. And yeah, so that's what hers is like. It's good. It also has monthly stats, which is nice. And I think that that is the same in the reading log for Book Riot. Then, like I showed you, the book slash sold habit tracker. If you want that, I obviously didn't use it. Library tracker really helps me, even though I haven't used it this year yet. These are your releases of the year owned library, which I have on my reading tracker for Book Riot. <laughs> and then there's also like a readathons tracker, which I really like. And then video ideas you can do as well. So that is Allie's. If you're a creator, I think you'll like this a little bit more. It really just depends on how you like to track your reading. And then if you don't like spreadsheets, I can suggest to Storycraft. They have great stats. They're awesome and they help when I'm doing my wrap ups. Now here is the Storygraph. You go to stats and I can select a month. So let's go March because that's what I was doing. And you can actually see moods and pace length, fiction versus nonfiction, genres, format, star ratings, and pages. And some people have issue with this sometimes because the genres are not genres, you know? I've read four reflective, eight emotional, three lighthearted, which I read a lot of middle grades, so that makes sense. Hopeful, three, adventurous, three, one, and then I read some dark, informative, funny, and challenging. Then you can see the pace. I read a medium pace and a fast pace because I read some middle grade. <laughs> um, average num page number was under 300 pages at 75%. Uh, fiction versus nonfiction. I read 83% fiction and 17% nonfiction. And then we get to the genres, which are confusing. This is what I hope they update because middle grade is not a genre it's a demographic young adult is a demographic and so so on um we can see i read some sports but i read six middle grade i read for lgbtqia plus which is also not a genre it is a subject so maybe they could get on that i know the story graph is working so good to get us everything we want they're great um definitely sign up it's free to sign up for this it's like goodreads but better um, and what I like about it more is it's more secluded. So like, I don't have to have people like comment on my things and all, and it's just nice. Uh, format, I read 11 print, 8% digital. I read 92% print and 8% digital. And you can also click these and it'll show you. Then, as you know, I haven't really read, I'm not rating books. So you can see like no rating was six. So I don't really rate them. And then here's another graph. And like I said, I'm not a math person, so I am not going to be doing like a math version of this. If you want to, I think you need to kind of find somebody else for that. But here you can see my pages. I read 2,906 pages. And then let's see just the whole year comparison. I wonder if I can do that. Yeah, okay. So I've read 19 books and 4,210 pages. I have read mainly emotional books, which makes sense. Um, I've read reflective books, lighthearted, and hopeful books are like my big bear stats. I read more medium pace books, which kind of makes sense. I've read under 300 pages. <laughs> yep, that's me. 68% uh, fiction, 32% nonfiction, and I've read a lot of young adult LGBT and middle grade. And my most read authors are Robin Ha. I didn't even know they had that. That's cool. I have a whole episode where I go over my stats of the year. So if you want to listen to that and just get more of a perspective, you can go and listen to that or watch it, uh, whatever you prefer. 
I don't know what this is. Number of books and pages. Uh, star rating is I've done 15 reviews. And that's kind of it. So that's the story graph. I really like the way that their stats are set up. So I think if you're a stats person and you don't feel like manually tracking it, this is the way to go. I I don't know if it tracks or reading challenges at all. I kind of wish it would do that a little bit, but I feel like it kind of does that already where like I w I'm saying I wish that the reading stats were in this section, but they're kind of in the reading challenges section. As you can see here, it will show you like the percentage. This is my favorite part of the story graph that I talked about in my book apps video. Oh my god, I'm gonna keep saying video because I'm recording, but the episode where I talked about the story graph, I mentioned this and this is my favorite part. I, I love stats just because I like lists and I like seeing all of my things. That's why I put everything in a spreadsheet and then I forget about it. <laughs> so that is how I track my reading. And then let's see what else I have on the agenda. So on Instagram, I got a couple questions and I just, cause I just asked, Hey, I'm making an episode about reading, tracking. What do you want to know? Um, so Beck asked me, do you prefer specific apps for tracking any you'd recommend, or do you prefer your own spreadsheet? Now I kind of already went over that, but I like both. I just like to have everything tracked. <laughs> I don't know. I would. I guess I could just use the story graph because it tells me everything, but I do like the other spreadsheets that I use because it helps me track how my diverse reading is going, like if I'm reading very diversely or not, and what I need to change in my reading habits. So that is something that is why I would prefer my spreadsheet, but like I said, I love the story graph. Usually keep track of your reading format wise, digital versus physical or owned versus borrowed. And then the last question was, how has it changed over the years? Um, like I said, I used to track on Goodreads and then I found the spreadsheets and all. I don't know when I converted. I think maybe it was like 2019 or 2020 that I started using spreadsheets exclusively, but I still use Goodreads and I use the story graph and how Goodreads works is you have to have a challenge in order for them to track your reading. So the story graph, you don't have to have a challenge, which is really awesome. So the story graph is where it's at. <laughs> but yeah, I started using Goodreads and then I started using spreadsheets. And like I said, they're so much easier for when I'm doing wrap ups and book calls and stuff like that. I really like to track my arcs and it helps me I'm, I'm not really good at scheduling things. I'm not good at goals, goals like literally at all. So um, sometimes it helps me to just track it all. But I sometimes the manual tracking is hard because you have to manually import it and sometimes you forget. So it would be nice to just be able to track everything from an app, you know? So do you usually keep track of your reading format wise, which I do. I've already kind of said this, but I really like to see my own diverse library books. So how many books am I reading from the library? How many books am I reading from my own TBR? That's why I like tracking it because it really helps me. And then I have an own library on Notion where I have everything. So maybe I'll show you that as well. Um, I'm already on Notion, so perfect. That's how I outline my episode. Here is my own library on Notion. <laughs> this was from last year. So actually we have to go over to my physical TBR. So here's my physical TBR. How I track it is title and author, genre read, <laughs> read with a check mark so I can check it off and I have a filter sorted. So if I click off read, then I have, these will just be my unread books. So then I have date finished, liked or disliked because I'm not doing a rating. And then I should probably do like an unhaul one, but when I unhaul, I just try to delete it. That's the one con of this is if I unhaul, then I have to remember what books I've unhauled. <laughs> um, but here's this. And what I love about it is that it shows me, it calculates it for me, which I love because like I said, I'm not a math person. So this will tell me that I have 120 books and then it'll tell me that I've checked 5.8 well actually wait so i guess these are actually not on a filter right now but this will tell me that i've read almost six percent of my own tbr so notion is a great resource if you like math they just updated it and i'm still kind of figuring out 
how to work it now because they changed it, which I don't like. It's annoying, but I really like Notion if you're not on it. I think if you're a math person, you would really like it, but it just depends. So that is how I track my reading. Let me know in the comments of the YouTube video how you track yours. I would really like to know. Let's talk about it. And I hope that this episode helped the person that submitted this topic. So thank you again. If you have any topics or advice you would like me to give you, you can drop it in the topic submission form. Thank you for listening to episode 13 of Reader Rambles, a weekly podcast for book lovers where I ramble about bookish topics and help readers navigate life. I will see you next week with another episode. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please feel free to review the podcast so that more people know about it. And if you want to see more bookish things from me, I have a YouTube channel, Pucks and Paperbacks, and you can follow me on Instagram at Pucks and Paperbacks and Twitter at Pucks Paperbacks. Thank you for listening and I will see you next week. Bye.